She was inside that arena, uh, saw the explosion. Kara, what did you see? Um, yeah, when, when they, they just started um, letting everyone out. The music had just gone off. There was a, there was a massive, massive explosion. There was a bang. There was, there was smoke coming up. Sorry, excuse me. Um, there was smoke coming like up through the steps, and everyone was just screaming and shouting, saying that it could be a bomb. And there were people shouting for the kids. There were people shouting for the little hearts and the five mm. people. And as as we went out into the concourse, like to get out of the arena, there was there was just bodies scattered about everywhere. And there was just words and people's belongings on the floor. And we just ran. We just, there was all, all the traffic was at a standstill, and we were just running through the roads. And oh, it was it was just chaos. <laughs> Sarah, I'm 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 so sorry. I know that you haven't even had a a moment to to process this, and you're coming no. on to share this. I I appreciate that so much. When you <laughs> walked through those tunnels, you're saying you saw a lot of people. Lying, was, who were lying down. Yeah, there was at least 20, 30 people on the floor. Some that you could see straight off were just just dead. You could just see that they were just passed away. There was some people with injuries. There was, there was a few, like, there was a guy or there was a husband there holding, like, what, what looked like his wife, and she, she wasn't in a good state. And from where you were, Kiara, those people, could you tell sort of, it, did it look like it had happened sort of in the stampede? Or was this near where the explosion may have happened? Were you even no, it, able to tell as you went by? There, 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 there was blood everywhere. It, it wasn't in the stampede because there, there wasn't that many people out at that minute. It, it was just as we opened the door to get out of the arena, as they were letting people out. We... And there it, was blood. Yeah, there was, there was blood and people's shoes and handbags and bits of food and phones. And it was just mad. It was just crazy. And Kiara, was, 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 was the people you were with, are they all, are they all safe? Yeah, we're, we're all safe. It's just, just a bit shook off at the minute. I don't think I'll ever get rid of the images. Mm. <sighs> Kira, thank you so very much. I, again, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I know this is so hard. I am yeah, so glad for you that you're okay. But I know that that, at this moment, is 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 a mixed blessing as you think about what you have seen. Thank you so much for telling us about it. You're welcome. I'm just hoping that everyone everyone finds who they were with, and that everyone. I just so I just feel so sorry for the fatalities and the families of those affected. All right, Kiara, thank you again so very much. Uh, you just heard uh, Kiara Dauber, who was there, just tell us as she was leaving the concert, uh, she saw 20 or 30 bodies on the floor, and she said uh, to, to her they were all clearly dead. There was blood everywhere. Calvin Wellsford joins me now. He was in the front row of the concert. Calvin, thank you very much for coming on uh, and, and, and doing this. I know it's incredibly difficult, uh, but, but you are the ones who are enabling us all to understand what just happened here. What did you see? So I was front row at the concert, and I heard a big bang. I don't know what it was, but I guess it was a bomb or a gun of some sort. And I turned around to see all of the crowd completely running and flying towards the stage where I, I was, because I was front row. And as I was there, I panicked and started to have an asthma attack and cry and scream. And I saw her, I saw Ariana Grande's mom and her best friend run backstage and a few other people just ran backstage because that was the exit, that was our nearest place to go without going up the steps. So I ran because I thought if I'm not in cover I'll be safer. And I was taken in by one of her security people who asked if I was okay and wasn't really aware of what was happening. But I, um, but I explained to her that I heard a, a sound which was like a bomb and that everyone was running and crying and she I took my arm and took me aside and asked if I was okay and yes. then gave me to other security people who took me out of the thing and then I ran. 
and Calvin, we were just uh, we were just speaking to someone else who was there who said she had seen uh, 20 or 30 bodies on the floor. Did you see anything like that? I can't really remember. I completely blanked, and my thing was one. My I in my head, I was like, I need to get as far away as I can, and I completely blanked. I can't even remember anything after getting out of that arena. All right, Calvin, thank you very much. Again, thank you for, for coming on. I know you're in shock, as so many others are. Uh, we continue our coverage here of the story. Dan Senor also joins us, spent time in Iraq, of course, uh, and advising uh, Mitt Romney as well. Dan, you know, when you look at something like this happening in the UK, and there are still so many details we don't know, right? These are just a few right. eyewitness accounts that we are putting together from people who are very much in shock. But you just heard that woman say 20 or 30 bodies. She saw a lot of blood. Um, we, we just don't know at no. this point, but but what we're hearing is horrific. Right. So if it, I mean, the human catastrophe of it, just in its raw form that we're hearing about and seeing images of, makes it hard to analyze these things. We hope it was not a terrorist attack. Right. Actually, we hope if something exploded and people panic. God forbid. Right. And that's. But exactly. if it, but it's, it's, it tells you a lot about the climate in which we are in today. That something like this happens in Europe. 10, 15, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have, our minds wouldn't have immediately gone to a terrorist attack between Paris, between France and Brussels and all these terrorists, at the UK, these terrorist attacks have been going on uh, around the region. And this constant focus in political environments over the last several years on the two plus million refugees that have come, you know, into Europe via Germany, and now many of whom have spread throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, established or, or in, you know, inserted themselves into communities that create infrastructure for terror. Wh whether that is this or not, that is where people's minds go. And as Spider said earlier, you know, Theresa May has got an election coming up in a couple of weeks. She was the Home Secretary under Prime Minister Cameron. She was the equivalent of the Secretary of Homeland Security. She's regarded in the right. UK as having the strong Homeland Security credentials. Immediately, these sorts of issues and, and various political leaders' credibility on them yeah. become a major factor. So these, uh, I just want to, show everyone, as we're getting some new images here, these are the first images I'm going to show you right now uh, coming in. These are still photos of, of, of some of the injured, as you can see. Um, and, and, and General Marks, let me ask you from what we're hearing from our um, witness. When, when she says 20 or 30 people, again, she, she says they were all clearly dead from what she could see. We have absolutely no idea at this point of, of the number of fatalities, although we do know there are fatalities. When she says there was blood everywhere, in your mind, does that make you think one thing versus another? Or is that something that could easily have happened in a stampede that would have occurred for any reason? No, I think what this leads you to, at least initially, the reports that we're getting out of the two eyewitnesses that you were able to, to bring on, is that it leads us to the, at least to an immediate thought that this was a single incident that occurred. There was an explosion of some sort. As Dan indicated, we don't know exactly what that is. Yeah. But that explosion then caused some immediate panic and immediate deaths, a bunch of destruction within a controlled area. And then you get the, you get the exits that are now being overwhelmed by humanity trying to get out of there. I think what you're, what you're looking at is too early to tell whether it's an act of terrorism, but it was some explosion that occurred. We'll figure out what that looks like. But I don't think this occurred in multiple locations. It wasn't synchronized where mm -hmm. you had multiple attacks in multiple locations within that very enclosed no. arena. No, it, it doesn't. At this point, you know, there had been some reports. It's all eyewitness at this point, uh, because we don't yet know, uh, but of, of, of multiple explosions. But our, our uh, eyewitnesses have only uh, each spoken of hearing one, so for, for right. what that's worth. John, though, when you talk about this, this is one of the largest arenas in the U.K., 20,000 people. Uh, it can fit 20,000, but a lot of the people who were there tonight, kids, teenagers, and, and particularly teenage girls uh, here for this concert. And, and that's what makes this especially horrific, as we find out what the details are. The fact that so many teenagers and families uh, were caught up in this is what makes it so especially horrific. You know, Manchester is a music mecca in England. It yeah. is, a, you know, it, it is a city with a great music culture. And obviously, the UK has dealt with terrorism going back to the days of the IRA. Um, but as we get more information, the first thing is just the the prayers we must all give out to the families. Uh, and the teenagers and the children who may have been affected and caught up in this horrific event tonight. And, and Dan, I think what, what you're raising here is whatever the cause may have been, is that now the first assumption is right. that something like this happened. It's, and that's part of the reason people would have reacted the way they did. You know, someone who was on the show earlier who was there said, well, when I first heard it, there's a lot of big bangs right. at something like this. I may not have thought something of it.
Just look but at the then coverage I of, did because of what has happened. Just look at the coverage last week in New York City when the driver drove into Times Square. <laughs> And immediately, where does everybody go to? Terrorist attack. Because actually, in, in several parts of the world, including in Israel, this is a common terror tactic now, right. driving into a sure crowd goodness, of people. We've seen that across Europe uh, right, as just right. an example. Yes. So, so you don't need a, a sophisticated bomb-making capability anymore. It could be something quite simple as driving into Times Square. Who knows if this is actually a terror attack, what sparked this? But I just think this is, this is where we in sort of the West go immediately whenever there's an incident like this. And it's, you know, these are extremely turbulent times. And, and you know, one of, the, one of the mantras of Homeland Security in the United States, and I think around the world, is you hope for the best, you prepare for the worst. And I think that applies to tonight as well. And, and, and General Marks, how quickly do you think we're going to know what happened here? Obviously, we're now in just about not even one hour since we first heard of this, just about one hour. Uh, it doesn't matter what time it is in the U.K. They're, they're, they're working every second that they can. Uh, how, how quickly do you think we will know what this was, whether it was terror or, or just some horrible accident that caused stampedes? Within six hours, I think we'll, we'll know more. The priorities of work right now will be to care for the wounded, keep those alive, isolate the dead, let's be objective about this, isolate the area so you can begin to build the forensics, make this thing as antiseptic as you can, and you start diving into it. So you'll have multiple teams that have rehearsed this over multiple times, unfortunately, that will be doing their tasks to ensure that within a short order of time, you at least have a sense of where you need to go to figure out how this thing occurred. Dan. And if it, if it was a terror attack, uh, they also have to keep an eye on what other public venues are potential targets and are vulnerable. All of the above. If there's, yeah. a, I mean, God forbid, if this is a sophisticated coordinated attack where you can hit multiple locations, they'll immediately keeping an eye on public transportation, any areas, venues that are highly concentrated with people. Whenever these attacks occur, if it is an attack, mm -hmm. That's where law enforcement, Homeland Security, or the Home Office, in the case of the UK, goes. Yeah, and I think, John, it's worth remembering, because I remember that afternoon, I think so many do, when the Paris attacks happened. Obviously, yeah. it was evening there. It was afternoon here. It, it, it did take a little while, probably just about, about the time we've had now, maybe a little bit less, if I, if I recall. But it was very quickly that they knew that and something horrible had happened. Obviously, the details you know, took, took quite, quite some time over the next few days to come out, but they knew it was terror. Of course, and, and in that case, we had con interconnected incidents, as, as Dan is expressing. You know, right. One of the telltale uh, signs is, is if there are uh, detonations at different exits, for example, or right. multiple incidents across the city. There does not seem to be that in this case at Manchester. That's important, but that was certainly one of the telltale signs that made yeah. it definitive in Paris. It, and, and General Marks, that is, I think, very important at this hour. Again, there, there could be more we don't know, but from what we're hearing uh, from people who were there uh, is that there was one very large explosion. But the, but the operative word, at least from what these eyewitnesses are saying, is one. Exactly. What John just indicated is that we have, in this particular case, an adaptive threat. At Bataclan, what you had was folks with weapons, you had multiple explosions, etc. What you have here is obviously someone who learned from that and achieved an equal amount of destruction and the terror that that individual wanted to put in place. Yeah. Again, we, we must assume that this is an act of terrorism and then we'll take it from there because of the amount of resources that are available that go after something like this. We can back off if we find out that it's not. It's an accident. I doubt that. All right, and uh, as, as we get ready to hand it off, we have an, another eyewitness here just telling our show uh, that, that he was there and heard five or six bangs. So as I said, very much piecing this together. It is, it is very uncertain at this hour what it could have been, uh, but this one's saying five or six bangs. Let's hand it off now for the continuing.